We do work against gravity by applying a force through a distance. The mechanical work is converted into stored gravitational potential energy of the rock that has been raised by height h above the top of the can. When you let go of the rock, what will be its velocity just before it hits the top of the can? To answer this question in the previous chapters, we would make the list of four out of six letters and use an equation for constant acceleration since v0 equals 0, y equals 0, and y0 equals h. This gives us v equals the square root of 2gh. We're going to repeat all the questions we've done so far this semester, but answer them more easily using the work energy theorem. Here is the work energy theorem. The total mechanical energy of a mass is kinetic energy of motion, one half mv squared, plus gravitational potential energy, mgh, plus elastic potential energy, one half kx squared. The work done by friction is equal to the change in total mechanical energy of that mass. The change, delta, is always final minus initial. The change in total energy equals the change in kinetic plus the change in gravitational plus the change in spring energy. So the work energy theorem is the work done by friction equals one half m vf squared minus vi squared plus mg times hf minus hi plus one half k xf squared minus xi squared. If no work is done by friction, then the change in energy is zero. Delta E total equals zero, and that means the final energy equals the initial energy, or EF equals EI. At any moment, the total mechanical energy of a mass is a mixture of kinetic energy of motion, gravitational energy, and elastic energy. We'll often write the conservation of energy as the energy at moment one equals energy at moment two, and a moment three, and a moment four, and so on. Let's use the conservation of energy to find the velocity of the rock when it is dropped from rest at a height h above the top of the can. Just as we can put the origin of our coordinate system anywhere we like, now we can put the zero of stored gravitational potential energy anywhere we like. We could put u sub g equals zero and h equals zero at the place where the rock is dropped, or we could put it at the ground level. This time, we'll choose to put h equals zero and gravitational energy equals zero at the top of the can because we want to find the velocity the instant before the rock hits the top of the can. We can put the zero line anywhere we like because the conservation of energy only involves changes in stored gravitational potential energy. And the difference between two heights is the same no matter where the zero line is located. The work done by air friction would only affect the fourth decimal digit in the calculation, so we'll ignore it. This means that the change in energy, delta E, equals zero so the energy is constant and is the same at every moment in time. And that the energy at moment one equals the energy at moment two. At any moment, the total mechanical energy is kinetic plus gravitational plus elastic. This problem has no spring, so the elastic is zero throughout. At moment one, just before the rock is dropped, the velocity of the rock is zero, and the total mechanical energy of the rock is mgh. At moment two, the can is just about to hit the rock. The total mechanical energy at this moment is one half mv squared, because both the height and the gravitational potential energy are zero. The conservation of energy between moments one and two is E1 equals E2, or mgh equals one half mv squared, which gives v equals the square root of two gh, as we found when we made the list of four out of six variables. 
The first time we use a new equation, it always takes five minutes to thoroughly explain every single symbol. The first problem that you solve will take some minutes, but the second problem will take half as many minutes. After you've solved five problems, the mystery will go away, you'll solve a problem in seconds, and you'll decide that all problems are the same. In using the conservation of energy, we identify which forms of energy occur at each moment in time, equate those energies, and then solve for the missing letter. Some problems include work done by friction. Please calculate the velocity that the rock will have just before it hits the can if height h equals 35 centimeters. To do this, we write the conservation of energy between moments 1 and 2. E1 equals E2. At moment E1, the mechanical energy is all stored gravitational potential energy, mgh. At moment 2, the rock is at h equals 0 so its total mechanical energy is all kinetic, one-half mv squared. Show the numbers that produce v equals 2.6 meters per second. If the rock was thrown downward with velocity 1.5 meters per second from that height, what is the velocity that the rock will have just before it hits the can? The conservation of energy between moments 1 and 2 is e1 equals e2, Gravitational energy U1 plus kinetic energy K1 equals gravitational potential energy U2, which is zero, plus kinetic energy K2, or MGH1 plus one half V1 squared equals zero plus one half M V2 squared. Please show the numbers which produce V2 equals 3.0 meters per second. Be sure to convert all lengths to meters. Let's look at the flow of energy in this rolling sphere. At any moment in time, the total mechanical energy is a mixture of kinetic energy of motion, shown by the blue bar meter, and gravitational potential energy, shown by the green bar meter. The total mechanical energy is constant, as shown by the pink bar. The gravitational energy and the height are zero along the orange line and follow the center of mass of the sphere. When the sphere is at its maximum height, the gravitational energy is maximum, as shown by the green bar, and the kinetic energy is zero because the velocity is zero. This is said to be a turning point in the motion. When the sphere passes through its lowest point, the velocity and kinetic energy are maximum, and the gravitational energy is minimum. Here is the sphere at three different moments in time. At each moment, the total mechanical energy is a mixture of gravitational energy, mgh, and kinetic energy of motion, one-half mv squared. We write E1 equals E2 equals E3 as mgh1 plus one half mv1 squared equals mgh2 plus one half mv2 squared equals mgh3 plus one half mv3 squared. Velocities v1, v2, and v3 and heights h1 and h2 and h3 will be given or one of them might be an unknown quantity which you solve for in answering the question. The mass cancels. If h2 equals 0 0.35 meters, v2 equals 1.5 meters per second, and h3 equals 0, what is v3? These are the same numbers as in the question of throwing the rock downward. Please show that v3 equals 3.0 meters per second. The conservation of energy here E1 equals E2 equals E3 gives the same numbers no matter what the path is between the three moments in time.
As the pendulum swings back and forth, the total mechanical energy of the mass is a mixture of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy of motion. We put the zero of gravitational energy at the lowest point in the motion of the center of mass of the object. Along this line, h equals zero and u sub g equals zero. As in the previous system, the kinetic energy is maximum when the mass passes through its lowest point and the gravitational energy is maximum when the mass swings to its highest points. Here are three moments in time. The conservation of energy between these moments is E1 equals E2 equals E3, or MGH1 plus 1 half MV1 squared equals MGH2 plus 1 half MV2 squared equals MGH3 plus 1 half MV3 squared. If the velocity at moment 2 is 1.5 meters per second and H2 is 0 0.35 meters, what will be V3 when H3 equals 0? For the third time, these are the identical numbers. Please show that we get V3 equals 3.0 meters per second. The conservation of energy doesn't care about the path taken by the mass as it moves between these three elevations. All that matters is the height above the zero of gravitational energy. A pendulum consists of a mass hanging from a string of length L. Pull the mass aside by angle theta. We set h equals zero and gravitational potential ug equals zero along this horizontal line. The shaded triangle has a hypotenuse of length l and an adjacent side of length l cosine theta. We have height h equals the entire string length l minus the adjacent portion l cosine theta. We factor out the l and have h equals l times 1 minus cosine theta. If the zero of gravitational potential energy is placed at the lowest point in the swinging motion, then ug equals mgl times 1 minus cosine theta. The conservation of mechanical energy, e1 equals e2 equals e3, can be written in terms of heights, h1, h2, and h3, or in terms of angles, theta1, theta2, and theta3, along with velocities v1, v2, and v3. For example, if the string length L equals 17 centimeters, and the angle theta equals 27 degrees, please show that h equals 0 0.15 meters. Be sure to use degrees, not radians. This mass rolls in a circle of radius r. And we have h equals r times 1 minus cosine theta. This is the relaxed length of this spring. We bolt one end to the wall, put the origin of the coordinate system, x equals zero, at the loose end of the spring and attach a mass. Then we stretch the spring to distance x1. The total mechanical energy of the spring is kinetic energy, one half mv1 squared, plus the elastic energy stored in the spring. It's one half k x1 squared. When we let go of the mass, the spring compresses. At moment two, the spring is stretched by distance x2 and has total mechanical energy E2 equals one half m v2 squared plus one half k x2 squared, where v2 is the new velocity. At moment three, the energy is E3 and energy E4 at moment four. The stretch at moment four is x4 equals zero. 
so there is no elastic energy stored in the spring. The total mechanical energy is one half m v four squared. The mechanical energy is now entirely kinetic energy of motion. And then E5 at moment 5 and E6 at moment 6. The flow of energy in this spring is a continual exchange of kinetic energy of motion and stored elastic potential energy. For example, the spring is stretched by x1 equal 1.2 meters and released from rest, so v1 equals zero. The spring constant, little k, equal 3 newtons per meter, and mass m equals 0.67 kilograms. What will be the velocity when the mass passes through the equilibrium point, which means that x2 equals zero? The conservation of mechanical energy between moments one and two is E1 equals E2, where energy 1 is all elastic potential energy, 1 half kx1 squared, and energy 2 is all kinetic energy of motion, 1 half mv2 squared. Please show that this gives V2 equals 2.5 meters per second. When the spring is stretched and then released, the mass oscillates between x equals plus x1 and x equals minus x1. So the distance x1 is said to be the amplitude a of the motion, where a equals x1. When the stretch is half this amplitude, the velocity of the mass is found from e1 equals e3, or 1 half ka squared equals 1 half m v3 squared, plus one half k a over two squared. Mechanical work is done by applying a force through a distance to stretch this elastic string. The mechanical work becomes stored elastic potential energy. This mass is hung from the end of a vertical spring, pulled down by a distance which will be the amplitude A of the motion and then released. In this situation, there are three flavors of energy, gravitational, elastic, and kinetic. Set H equals zero and the gravitational potential UG equals zero along this line because it's the lowest point in the motion. Set the zero of elastic potential energy along this line where the spring is not stretched. At this moment in time, the gravitational energy is maximum. The kinetic energy is zero because the mass has stopped moving. And the elastic energy is maximum because the spring is stretched by its greatest amount. The mass moves to its lowest point. Now the gravitational energy is zero. The elastic energy is maximum. And the kinetic energy is zero. The mass moves to an intermediate location where there is some gravitational energy, some elastic energy, and some kinetic energy. The mass moves to the place where the spring is not stretched. Then there is zero elastic energy, and some gravitational energy, and some kinetic energy of motion. The total mechanical energy remains the same, but there is a continual flow between gravitational, elastic, and kinetic energies. Grandpa is doing mechanical work to stretch the elastic strings. Then there is a flow of energy between kinetic, elastic energy in the string, and gravitational potential energy. Some elastic energy occurs in the sheet at the bottom. The child can add energy by doing mechanical work pushing against the sheet and some of the mechanical energy is converted into work done against air friction.
winding your mechanical wristwatch stores elastic energy in a spring and enables the motion of the dial. Indoor clocks and large outdoor clocks convert stored gravitational potential energy into the motion of the dials. You do mechanical work to raise the mass. The mass would fall straight back down, but the system of gears impedes its descent. For a very important reason, a mass is thrown downward onto a vertical spring. Initially, the mass is a height y above the relaxed length L0 of the spring. We put elastic potential energy, U sub s, equals zero along this line. When the mass hits the spring, the spring compresses by this maximum amount here. So we put stored gravitational potential energy, UG, equals zero along this horizontal line. The spring compresses by distance x, which we want to keep separate from any other length, including the relaxed length of the spring, L0, and the initial height of the mass, Y. At every moment in time, the total mechanical energy is gravitational, MGH, plus stored elastic energy, 1 half kx squared, plus kinetic energy of motion, 1 half mv squared. Here are four moments in time. At moment number one, the mass has just been thrown downward with velocity v1 from a height y above the top of the spring. Its total mechanical energy is 1 half mv1 squared plus mgh, where the height above the zero of gravitational potential is the distance y plus the distance a. At moment number two, the spring has been compressed by distance x. The height of the mass, h, is equal to a minus x above the zero of gravitational potential. So the total energy of the mass at moment two, e2, equals one half m v2 squared plus m g a minus x plus one half kx squared. This equation is quadratic in x, as will occur in some homework problems. At moment number three, the mass has come to a stop by compressing the spring through the maximum distance a. The mass is now at the height h equals zero. The total energy of the mass is e3 equals one half ka squared which is only elastic energy. At moment number four, the mass has risen to its maximum height after being thrown upward away from the spring, and at this moment, its velocity is zero. The total energy of the mass is all gravitational. E4 equals mg a plus y max. Equating the total mechanical energy at each of these four moments gives this equation. We could then solve for some unknowns. We want to see that through the moments, the energy is flowing among kinetic, gravitational, and elastic energies. This incline has angle theta. At moment number one, this mass has velocity v1 as it begins to slide downhill, traveling a distance d before it encounters this spring. Here is the relaxed length of the spring. Along this line, stored elastic energy is zero and x is equal to zero. At moment number two, the spring is compressed by distance x and the mass has velocity v2. And at moment number three, the spring is compressed by its maximum amount, a distance a. The mass would rebound up the hill, so this is the lowest point in its motion. 
we'll put stored gravitational potential energy, UG, and H equals zero along this line. The calculation will be easier if we take a frictionless inclined plane. We'll save friction for the next video. On a frictionless incline, the mass would rebound to its original location, but the velocity would be reversed. We are given distance d and a, and want to know the vertical height h1. In this triangle, the hypotenuse has length d plus a, so h1 equals d plus a times sine theta. Similarly, h2 equals a minus x times sine theta, and h3 equals zero. At moment number one, the mass has kinetic energy and gravitational energy. The total mechanical energy of the mass is E1 equals 1 half mv1 squared plus mgh1, where h1 equals d plus a times sine theta. At moment number two, the mass has kinetic energy, elastic energy, gravitational energy, and total mechanical energy E2 equals 1 half mv2 squared plus 1 half kx squared plus mg h2, where h2 equals a minus x sine theta. At moment number three, the spring is fully compressed and the mass has come to rest for an instant. The mass has only elastic energy, so E3 equals 1 half kA squared. At these moments in time, the energy flows between kinetic, gravitational, and elastic energies. A diving airplane exchanges gravitational energy, mgh, for kinetic energy, one half mv squared. Even the flies do this. When you take a swat at a fly and can't find the fly, it has exchanged height for velocity and disappeared. By the way, how does a fly go about landing on the ceiling? Does it spin to be upside down and then land upside down? You have to follow a fly for a while. You'll see that it hooks its front legs at the ceiling and then pivots around to have back legs on the ceiling. Some scavenger birds will fly a bone high into the air and drop it onto a rock, which breaks the bone open and enables the bird to get extra food from the interior of the bone. A river takes a meandering path because that requires the least amount of energy. Undershot water wheels grab some of the kinetic energy from the water. Please calculate the kinetic energy of one cubic meter of water, which has a mass of 1,000 kilograms, moving at three meters per second. If you stand in water that's a foot deep, but moving at three meters per second, it will knock you over. Sails and windmills take some kinetic energy from the moving air. If the sail or mill took all of the energy from the air, then the air would stop moving, and so would the sailboat or spinning mill. Calculations show that the maximum power is transferred to the cells when 59% of the wind's energy is converted into sail or mill motion, leaving 41% of the kinetic energy of the wind to continue moving the wind along. Some 60 million years ago, Aliens from another solar system recorded this video of an asteroid colliding with the Earth. When we learn about gravity, we'll see that a typical speed is 50,000 miles per hour, or 20,000 meters per second. Please calculate the kinetic energy of a 10,000 kilogram asteroid moving at that speed. Asteroid collisions leave huge craters on the Moon and the Earth and the other planets and moons. A running cheetah stores some energy in its flexible spine.
This energy is released during the right portion of each stride to enable a cheater to run faster than any other animal. They run as fast as 30 meters per second or 70 miles per hour. A flexible golf club also stores energy that is returned at just the moment that the ball is being struck, making the ball travel a greater distance. Grasshoppers and fleas store energy by stretching rubber-like protein, Reslin. It takes some time for this stretch to occur, so the animal must pause between jumps. The time required varies from 0.1 to 20 seconds, depending on the species. When the stretch is complete, the energy is released all at once in as little as 0.006 seconds, launching the animal into the air. Locusts leave the ground at 3.2 meters per second and jump through a range of 1 meter, rising 1 half meter vertically. The locust jumps at an angle of 45 degrees to maximize its range. How do you get a swing to begin moving? We first lean back, lowering our head while raising our feet. Grasping the rope, we lift ourselves upward by applying a force through a distance. This work increases our gravitational energy. We repeatedly do a bit of work at the right time with each oscillation and build the amplitude of our swing. Light has energy also. Suppose a cubicle box having sides of length 1 meter is lined with inward facing mirrors. If a light bulb is placed in this box, turned on, and then turned off, will the insides of the box remain lit. Each reflection absorbs some light energy, say 1%. After one bounce, the remaining light energy is 0.99 of original. After two bounces, it is 0.99 times 0.99. And after n bounces, a fractional amount, 0.99 to the n power, of the energy remains. For n equal 10,000 bounces, 0.99 to the 10,000 power equals 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 44 will be the fraction of remaining energy. This is an exponential decrease in remaining light. Since light moves at the speed c equal 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, it reflects 3 times 10 to the 8th times per second in this cubicle box. The fraction 0.99 raised to the 3 times 10 to the 8th power is 0. All the light energy is absorbed by the mirrors within a fraction of a second. If a 100 watt light bulb is turned on for one second and then turned off, it will have emitted 100 joules of energy. This energy is absorbed by the glass mirrors, whose temperature is raised just a little bit. The rise in temperature T is given by mc delta T equals 100 joules, where C is the specific heat of mass M. In the previous chapter, we used Newton's force equation to describe the motion of these two masses. The two masses are released from rest and they have the same velocity because they are tied together by a string that is looped over a pulley. Mass M2 slides down the hill of angle alpha and kinetic friction coefficient mu k. What is the velocity of M2 after it slides a distance d down the hill and M1 rises vertically by distance d? For two masses, we have the work done by friction equals the change in kinetic energy plus the change in gravitational energy for mass 1, plus the change in kinetic energy and the change in gravitational energy for mass 2. This notation avoids having a zillion subscripts for mass number 1 and 2 at the initial and final locations. Mass 1 increased its kinetic energy by delta K, which is always final minus initial, but the initial kinetic energy was zero because the mass wasn't moving. So delta K equals one half M1 V squared. 
and mass 1 increased its gravitational energy by delta G equals M1GD. Mass 2 increased its kinetic energy by delta K equals 1 half M2V2 squared and decreased its gravitational energy by delta U equals minus GD sine alpha because the drop in vertical height H would be D sine alpha. The work done by friction is the dot product of the frictional force vector FK and the displacement vector D. And this equals FK D times cosine of 180, which is the angle between the uphill frictional force and the downhill displacement vector. The frictional force is always mu K times the normal, and on this inclined plane, the normal force is M2G cosine alpha. So the work done by friction is minus mu K M2G D cosine alpha. Then the work energy theorem produces this equation. This portion is the work done by friction. This portion is the change in energy of mass 1, and this portion is the change in energy of mass 2. So next we could solve for V, or whichever symbol is the unknown quantity.